Hey guys, Nurkin101 here, and today we are going to be talking, as I have promised multiple people, about the Evangelion Netflix dub and translations as a whole. And I know this video is a bit late, but I wanted to wait a while while I gathered some information, made sure my facts were correct, and let emotion cool down before I did this, and I think I've waited long enough, so now let's talk about the dub of Neon Genesis Evangelion on Netflix. Before we get into my thoughts on the dub, which I have a lot to say on it, I do want to clear up a couple of things. First of all, it is very important to note that Studio Kara, the studio owned by Hirodaki Ano himself, did help produce this dub, and they are the ones responsible for most of the changes. This was not something Netflix did 100% on their own. Also, I've seen some people complain about the fact that episode 16 looks pretty bad compared to the rest of the show. That is because Studio Gynax actually lost the original footage multiple years ago. So before any remaster could be made, they had lost the footage. So now there's no footage to remaster and improve the quality of. So that colossal failure falls basically entirely on Gynax. The recasting is strange and something I don't 100% understand because Studio Kara worked with most of the original voice actors in the rebuild film. I would also like to clear up because I've spoken with her on Twitter before, Amanda Wingley, who is a really nice woman. Um, the reason she didn't come back for the rebuilds, for anybody who doesn't know, it's because her son, who was a newborn, actually had just been diagnosed with cancer when those started. So she was understandably pretty busy dealing with that. So that is why she is not in the rebuild. It had nothing to do with a bad relationship between her and Kara or her and Funimation. She's actually done voice work since then. So that is not the problem there, which is why many people are curious as to why the recasting decision was made. And the purpose of this video is not to go into the details of the drama involving the director Carrie Karanin and her actions and treatment involving the original cast, which is pretty dummy. But that's not what this video is about. About, I may make a video just detailing the full story of that drama in the future. Let me know if you guys want that. But no, this video is about the issues with the dub in terms of the dub itself and the translations. So I think right off the bat, I think the best place to start is the translations because at the end of the day, the point of a dub is to translate a show into another language. Now this is a very odd situation, because most of the time, when talking about dubs of anime, most of the time, actually like 99% of the time, people are talking about mistranslations and mistakes that are made in it. Um, this dub is 100% accurate in terms of the translations. All the translations are 100% correct. And that is actually what the problem is, which is something you don't normally hear people say. You see, Japanese and English are two very different languages, and when translating certain scenes in a dub, sometimes you have to change the dialogue slightly in order for it to have the same impact in that language, because the original perfect translation wouldn't have that impact, because sometimes that's just not how people talk. I think probably the best example of this is in the hospital scene in the beginning of End of Evangelion, in the original dub, Shinji says after he does what he does to Asuka, I am so fucked up, which works in the context of the English language. Something horrible has just happened, and Shinji is having an instinctive reaction, and that is what an English-speaking person would say. Now, what Shinji says in the Netflix dub is really awkward and weird, what he says is, I am the lowest of below. Which is actually, as I stated, one of those lines that is actually more accurate to the Japanese version, but when you say both out loud and try to put yourself in that sort of position, you immediately realize it doesn't sound natural in English. It just doesn't sound right, it doesn't set the tone for a movie very well, but it is more accurate. If that does, at the end of the day, match the original Japanese more, but it didn't sound as nice, and that's the big problem with this dub. A lot of things just don't sound as nice, even though they're more accurate. If I wanted to, I could probably go episode by episode and pick out a ton of small scenes like this, but I'm not going to do that, you guys get the point, 
and I'm sure somebody is already in the process of doing a scene-by-scene -scene comparison of every single episode. However, on the topic of the translation issues in the Netflix dub and the translations and the subtitled versions for Netflix, I do think it is important to talk about the Karu and Shinji thing. However, I do want to state that in the comments, can we all be civil and try not to be political? Because this isn't a political subject matter at the end of the day. Objectively, this is about translation. However, the big thing that made a lot of people very angry, myself included, is that they changed Karu's dialogue around the end of the series to have Karu say, I liked you. Shinji as opposed to I love you Shinji, which is another one of those cases where yes the translation is technically more accurate, but the issue is that it doesn't come across with the same intention as it did in Japanese, because the translation in English means something different, it has different context in the English language. Taking out the word love and replacing it with like or I'm worthy of your grace completely changes the context of the theme to make it more of a friendship, bro relationship than a two people that love each other, which destroyed the entire point of Shinji's relationship with Karu entirely. And Shinji's relationship with Karu is one of the most important aspects of the near end of the series as well as the movie End of Evangelion. So this chain kind of just changes the context of all that end of the theory content. So overall on the translation front, yeah, the translations are a massive problem. But I think what I would rather talk about is the dub, because I really dislike this dub. But before we do that, I do want to reiterate what Fike, Tiffany, and Amanda all said on Twitter, which is that don't attack the new cast. I'm sure Casey, Stephanie, and Ryan are great people, and I don't think we should be attacking them. They haven't done anything wrong. They're just being paid to do a job. Now, with that being said, their performance in this dub is pretty bad. Now, first of all, on the matter of Shinji, yeah, Shinji sounds like a, a seven-year-old girl. Which doesn't really work with Shinji. I know people in the community have this conversation quite often with characters like Boruto with Amaki, who definitely does not sound like a 12-year-old boy. But with the case of Shinji, I feel like his gender and the way people perceive him because of that is so important to his character. Lines like, be a man, from Miskato in episode 1, are so important that I think Shinji sounding like a little girl kind of makes the thing when people to tell him to man up work less. It's just when he's having an argument with somebody about how he doesn't want to man up, but you hear the voice of a girl coming out of it. It doesn't it doesn't work as much, but you're like, well, it sounds like a girl, so watch it. It, it. it just doesn't work, and it kind of sounds a little ridiculous when he has an argument with his father about manning up. I just think it missed the point of the character entirely. And also, Casey, she's probably great at what she does. But in Evangelion, which is the only thing I've ever seen Casey in, mind you, of all her deliveries incredibly flat. She sounds almost like she doesn't want to be there, but not like she wants to leave, like she's acting like it, like she doesn't want to be in the booth, like she's bored. Like Shinji, all his dialogue is flat and bored and has no real emotion behind it. And the same thing can be said for most of the cast, especially Ryan, who I just, I don't know what her deal is with Ray. I'm not sure if she was trying to do that because of Ray's personality and character traits, but she sounds so dull, it is just, there's nothing to her portrayal of Ray. But it's not like it's dull in the way Amanda and Lee would deliver her lines to Ray sometimes, like she was trying to make Ray sound emotionless and soulless. It's dull in the way that she just kind of feels like she's speaking into the mic and she's not really acting, which as I said is the case for a lot of the people in this dub. Like, there's just nothing really there. It's like she's not even acting, like she's just reading lines off a piece of paper and it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't really say Ray to me. Amanda Wing League Ray, what I've always said I liked about it was that it fit Ray's role of like Gendo's obedient puppet. But it also gave off this sense of mystery, which I really liked. It gave off this sense of maturity and mystery and wisdom, which Ray had. And when you combine these things with how Ray turned out at the end of the series becoming almost like a god, it really worked when she talking to Shinji at the end, the way she sounds. So overall, I'm not a fan of Casey or Ryan's performance, but what perplexed me is Stephanie. For now on one level, Stephanie at least sounds like she wants to be there and is doing this 
for more than just making a quick buck, like she wants to do good at her job, she sounds like she's trying, she has a little bit of emotion in her voice, but on another level, she sounds a lot like she's trying to imitate Tiffany Grant, like it's most certainly a Tiffany Grant knockoff voice, but it also kind of sounds like she's going for something else at the same time, and it does not work. She also sounds a lot younger, so even her Tiffany Grant like knockoff voice sounds way younger than Tiffany's Octa, which I don't think works because Octa's whole thing is that she makes herself a year older. So I always thought that what I liked about Tiffany's Octa, that it almost felt like Tiffany was trying to make it sound like Octa was making herself sound older. But Tiffany's Octa, that's not how a 14 year old girl sounds. But it works that because Oscar's whole thing is that she wants others to perceive her as an adult, so her putting on an adult voice makes a lot of sense, which is why I really liked it. With Stephanie, she just sounds like a really young version of Tiffany Grant's Oscar that's trying to do her own thing, and just doesn't sound good. Like, when she says balls to the walls, I almost feel like I'm hearing Tiffany say it, but like, if Tiffany did Oscar when she was like, 11. The thing about Stephanie that almost bothered me and perplexed me is that, as I said earlier, it does feel like she was trying, but I'm also like, it just feels like you were trying to do a good job at being Tiffany Grant, which you're not, you shouldn't be doing, and the worst part about a dub like Evangelion's on Netflix is that these actors can't be given criticism. They don't have any room to improve because they're done. They, they did it once, they're not doing it again, we're not going to redub the rebuild that Lake the Far I'm aware, so they're not going to be doing any other property that Shinji Oscar or Ray. so it's just kind of like, what's the point? Netflix, from my understanding, does not own the original dub, which is why there are also changes to the titles, because a lot of the titles were changed by Gainax when they were put into English, and of course, since they don't own those titles, they can't use them, and I guess Netflix doesn't want to pay for them because they can't afford it, apparently. And all the other characters are basically the same thing. Most of them are just kind of dull and bland. There aren't many that I think are an outstanding performance. The only person I would say with 100% certainty did a good job, at least under performance, was Johnny Yambosch. But of course, that doesn't matter because the translation issue ruined a lot of Toji's dialogue. I mean, I'm not gonna get into it because it's the same issue we talked about with the Karu thing, but the fact that he said, way to go, man, in the congratulations scene is so appalling to me and misses the point of the scene to such a high degree, it blows me away and it upsets me because Johnny Young Boss is such a good actor, I would have liked to hear him do the scene properly in a voice for Toji, but alas, also, it was a bad casting, Johnny and Boss should have played Kaji. But all that aside, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, they got rid of Fly Me to the Moon, which is infuriating. I don't know how you could do that. I've seen some theories as to why they did it. Turn around, that Netflix didn't want to pay the money for the song. They didn't want to license it. Because they do have it in Japan. Which is why I'm confused. Netflix Japan does have Fly Me to the Moon. Which is what is so perplexing to me, what I don't get. So clearly they can get it, it's not like a licensing thing. I think it's possible that maybe they thought it would be weird if you changed to the Japanese voices after the episode ends, because obviously, Fly Me to the Moon is sang by Japanese members of the Japanese cast. But I just don't understand it. I mean, I honestly don't understand why they didn't do it. I've seen some sources say they couldn't afford it. Which to me is like a load of shit. I'm like, they're Netflix? What do you mean they couldn't afford the song? They're Netflix. They have billions of dollars. They already spent an ungodly amount of money on the series. They couldn't get the ending song that is incredibly iconic that everybody likes. There is no way that the only reason Fly Me to the Moon isn't on there is because Netflix could not afford it. If that is the reason that is so incredibly petty on Netflix, because it's not that they couldn't afford it, it's that they didn't want to cough up like $20,000 to buy it when they already spent probably a couple million on the series. I will say in Netflix's defense, um, I have had a hard time finding even just the OP, A Cruel Angel Thesis, in the quality they have for most of the series. As I said, they don't have a good quality episode 16, 
but that fault lies on Gainax for somehow losing the footage. I don't know how you lose 30 minutes worth of footage, but Gainax did it. But I will admit that when I sat down to watch the dub, I remember I woke up and the first thing I did was I was like half awake, I didn't even get my drink yet. Like my morning drink, I just sat down in my chair, turned it on, and I remember I was immediately taken back by how good the OP looked. How good Cruel and Justice looked. The outline for the character, the fact that it was more than just black silhouettes in the background. It was just so much more detailed and beautiful looking. It was a great, great remaster. This is what we have been wanting in the West for decades. But my real big problem with it is that it's not that the dub is bad, it's that the translations are bad. So, if I don't want to deal with the bad voice acting from the dub, I can go to the sub, but that won't stop the subtitle from saying stupid crap like way to go man during the congratulations scene or getting rid of love in the Karu and Shinji scene. That won't stop the fact that the translations aren't good. And I feel like this whole thing is just really upsetting, especially because Kara had a hand in it. So it's almost like, I don't even know who's at fault here. Nobody really knows. It's a really messy situation. And I may do more videos about this if more information becomes available. But overall, do I like the new dub? Absolutely not. I think the new dub is really bad. I don't like it. I think one of the things that immediately stood out to me while watching it is that I think there are some characters that are better acted in the original Dragon Ball Z dub than there are in this dub. Like, it's really bad. Like, the acting is just really bad. And I guess Studio Kara's involvement does kind of explain it slightly. Because Netflix has apparently, as I've been told, done good dubs before. So, but I haven't watched any of their dubs, so I don't really know. But overall, I do not like the dub. I think it's really bad. I think the translations are far too literal and too close and too accurate to be original Japanese. They don't translate well into English, either in dub or subtitle form. But I do think it's worth noting that as somebody who loves Evangelion and who has seen the reaction people have been having and how much other people are enjoying it and now having the ability to easily share it with other people in my life, I do think that it is a good thing it came to Netflix. Because if Netflix hadn't done this, I don't think it would ever have come out of Belt Like This Thing but it was in. Now it is at the very least returned to relevance on a cultural level, and I think that will keep it relevant in the West long enough that maybe somebody else will get their hands on it and do it right. Or maybe Kara will realize they messed up and will get the original dub on Netflix. I'm not sure, but I'm super excited to be able to show Ava to people I know that I think will really enjoy it and will really get something out of it. Because I know that people typically when they watch Ava, they always get something meaningful out of it. Ava is a very special emotional and mental experience for most people who watch it, which is what makes it so special. I'm excited to share it with people I know. And all the guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me your thoughts on the Evangelion Netflix dub in the comment section down below. Once again, I'm sorry this video took so long. Just took me a while to get everything together. And above all else, guys, subscribe for more videos like this. I have a lot of Evangelion content. I love talking about Ava. Give me suggestions for Ava content in the comments. And above all else, guys, have a great day.